Stuart, thank you so much for joining us here at Risk Minds. We are another year closer to the adoption of uh, FRTB. What would you say the position we're in at the moment with that? And, and do you, what do you see as the main challenges for banks, if you like, in adoption? Sure. Well, I think banks are still struggling to understand the impact that FRTB will have on their trading business. Uh, and this is further complicated by the fact that the regulations are still under some revision with the final version expected at the end of this year. So essentially they're trying to answer a few questions about their portfolio. For instance, should they contribute to data pools, um, which can increase the number of uh, real price observations they have on their risk factors. Uh, the second is, should they even exit certain types of business in a liquid market because the capital costs are prohibitively high? And also, should they even approve for internal, should they even apply for internal model approval at all? Um, and if they do so, what debt should they consider? So I think it's very difficult for a bank to answer these questions without having an FRTV compliance system in place. So they're caught in a catch-22 situation where in order to justify the investment in an FRTV um, system, they already need to have one in place to calculate the impact. So they've almost got to have a crystal ball to gaze in to see exactly what the final outcome is going to be. Indeed, yes. With that all in mind, how could perhaps data tech or, or, or machine learning and all the topics that are very hot on the agenda this week help with that implementation and, and what do they provide? Yeah, so I think there's, there's been two technology themes that have emerged in recent years that can help. Uh, the first is movement of software to the cloud where it can be provided as a service rather than um, being installed at the bank's site. And the second is the uh, breaking up of large monolithic systems into smaller modular components with well-defined interfaces called APIs. So we've adopted both of those techniques in our FRTB solution. So it means that we can help banks answer those challenging questions in a non-invasive manner. Um, so we've, we've put together three software components. Uh, the first is called the Modability Service. So here banks can assess their exposure to non-model risk factors and then make a judgment about whether contributing to a data pool can reduce the capital exposure they have to those risk factors. Uh, the second is the scenario service. So here they can proxy uh, normal risk factors and mitigate the high capital charges associated to them. And we found that a good choice of proxies means that banks can remain profitable in illiquid markets. And then in our, on our third and final component, FRTV Studio, we, uh, we give banks the ability to calculate total capital under internal model and standardized approach. Uh, so they can manipulate their desk structure, run the model validation tests, and work out what desks they should submit for internal model approval. So, so you believe it will be hugely beneficial for these banks to go out and seek the expertise that's there from people like you? That's right. In fact, we've found that um, when cl clients work with us, they can typically reduce their internal model capital charge by, uh, we'll bring it down to a third of their standardized amount. Uh, so that means it makes it easy for them to justify the investment cost of building out FRTB infrastructure, integrating with their choice uh, of our software's components. Obviously, with an eye on the regulators all the time, as you do, what do you see as their role going forward? Because obviously they're the gatekeepers and the protectors, but should they also be encouraging innovation too? Is that their role? Yeah, well, I don't think regulators necessarily are dampening down innovation. I think actually they see it as an advantage to themselves. Uh, so there's been talk of using machine learning type methods to actually review people's model approvals. Um, so I, think, I don't think regulators are against it, but of course they're very concerned about the additional risks that it might enter into, into, into the market. Um, and they're very keen to manage those, as with all the other risks that they manage. Because with the proliferation of all these new technologies and data, that also does bring risk, let's face it, doesn't it? It's one of those that's been talked about a lot this week is cyber security as well. That's sort of a buzzword at the moment. What would you say about that and how the industry needs to be approaching those sort of protections too? Well, I think, I think the industry needs to be aware of what, the, what the, you know, the latest threats are. And I think working in finance, we're off, often not at the cutting edge of technology. So I think more partnerships between uh, finance companies and technology companies are the way forward on that front. A positive note to end on, Stuart. Thank you so much for your contribution. My pleasure. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. You too.